Good morning. I've got uh, Felix from the Cat Empire on the line. G'day, Felix. How are you, mate? Good, Rusty. Thanks. That, that's that's good. Now, it's it's been a while since we spoke just prior to, if I recall, to the uh, Blues Fest in 2020, which was cancelled in mid-March. Now, at that stage, when I spoke to you, uh, you were uh, had just were heading off to a UK and European tour and coming back in time for Blues Fest, which, of course, that didn't eventuate in the end, <laughs> did it? You got you got part of the way round and got uh, COVID sent home. Yeah, that's right. It was a hell of a time. We'd just um, gone over there. I think we played six shows in the UK and we're due to head to Spain, which is a fantastic stomping ground for the Cat Empire and... Um, uh, within the space of two or three days, the world went um, very crazy around this, and, and we got we had to cancel the tour. Uh, got one an incredibly crowded, paranoid flight home, um, you know, and and had to isolate here for fourteen days. And um, it, it was it was a very very strange strange time. Just to seeing the the atmosphere change on the street feeling the shows and, and kind of an apprehension around that and it was just just an, an eerie time in the world and um and then we came home and, and i sort of tried to take that energy energy from what would have been the stage into um into quarantine here and i had a piano in my studio and, and, and spent a long time writing and, and i've really tried to continue to do that through the whole through the whole pandemic really because we haven't been able to perform much right which for a band who if you like not make your name or continue your name, but it is absolutely well known for the live music experience that you bring to a stage. Um, so how has it been for you guys not being able to do that for 18 months? Uh, look, it's been, it's been really tough. I mean, we've probably had, had more opportunities than most in a way. We were able to do um, some shows around the country with the Teske brothers and John Butler and Emily Uramara and Montaigne were on it on a festival bill together and we um, performed several shows around the country. And that was amazing. It was, it was, it was incredible. And, um, you know, um, but there's, there's also been a lot canceled and blues fest is case in point, you know, obviously we never made it to the first blues fest. The second blues fest was about to happen with an all Australian lineup. And that was cruelly shut down just before it, just before it opened. And, and this one, we're really, we're really um, kind, of, kind of trying to will it on because it's um, it's such an important festival. And for a band like us, you know, Blues Fest was a kind of an ultimate moment when we were kids. It's like if, if only we could play Blues Fest and we've been lucky to play it 15 times or something, I think. And uh, and yeah. and we just, just re really wanted to go ahead. It's, 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 it's lifeblood, that festival. It's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, look, we I, we have to thank you personally because right after we were closed down, like the day before we started, you, you uh, as in the Cat Empire, sent a big hamper to Peter with some beautiful words of support, which we put up on our socials, of course. And it was so appreciated by Peter and certainly by the staff because Peter very kindly shared the goodies out amongst everyone. So we... Uh, in, in, in our sort of very sort of like, not depressed, but you know what I mean? We were just deflated was the word, I think, deflated state. It was a very lovely thing to receive and, you know, thank you and please pass on our thanks uh, to uh, Corinne and all the guys in the band. Thank you. Yeah, oh, that's absolutely much much appreciated. And, you know, that, that festival has, um, has meant a lot to us over the years. It was... One where I um, I went up there just after I finished school and I went as a punter and um, and I just remember being in the audience watching, I think it was Ozzy Martley, maybe Ben Harper, I can't remember exactly. I think it was Ozzy Martley at that stage and I just thought I would love to play this festival one day. You know, it would be a, it would be such an, a moment for me because it it really meant a lot to me as, as, as a, not a performer, but just as, as a spectator there and um and I, you know, have been fortunate enough in my life to do that. And I also formed a kind of a friendship with, with Peter in the early days. He came to see the Cat Empire at the Prince of Wales. I think we're playing in St Kilda. And, um, and we got talking a lot about, about our favourite bands, a lot of them from New Orleans and, and Cuba. And, and we just sort of emailed each other for quite a while, just as music lovers. And so I feel like my connection to that festival, people there, is, um, 
is very long standing, you know, and, and runs deep. Well, hey, and we are looking forward to seeing you in October. It's only, uh, well, geez, it's only a few weeks away. Let's just leave it at that. And you've just released two songs. You're teasing us with that there's a new album and, and stuff. But I was particularly uh, impressed by one of the songs, Going to Live, um, which has uh, got a Spanish chorus. And uh, now you're of Austrian descent. How did you get a Spanish chorus in there? How did that happen? Well, I'm not just of Austrian descent. I've got I've got Czech, Scottish, Irish. I'm I'm total Mongol. I'm from <laughs> Australia, but have, have family from everywhere. And that's probably evident in the in the diversity of the music that I've chosen to play. In that sort of. Um, anyway, look, the Spanish thing is important. Has been important to me. I, I guess. Um, it's always been, uh, it has a real flamenco edge, this one. And, and I I guess I, I've gone back to that language as, as, a, as something to to sing because it, it it always made me feel really comfortable to sing in a language that I didn't know, you know. And, and more recently to write in a language that I don't know. And the way that that happens is I, as I mentioned before, had come back from... Um, from Europe as COVID was kicking off and had two weeks in a... In a um, studio and, and was trying to write music and, and one of the things that struck me is we were supposed to be in Spain so I was feeling really quite nostalgic and and, um, and sad that we weren't there um, and I was speaking to my friend Christina Recio La Fuente who, who sings the chorus on this this track and she um, was telling me you know Spain was, was doing it very hard at that point and um, everyone was in lockdown but, but for one moment each day they would go up to their rooftops or to their balconies and there'd be this singing around the neighborhood you know like a you know one hour where they'd all celebrate together you know despite the situation and the um and that was very moving to me and was probably the starting point for the song and so i wrote um english verses and then and then a sort of a, a chorus melody which has sounds gibberish i guess and then we'd laugh together we'd laugh and she'd say what well, that sounds like this and then and then so she'd, she'd start to write it and then we'd sort of think about what the song was doing as an atmosphere and she um put those spanish words to the to the nonsense that I'd been seeing through to her and, and we sort of wrote that song together and, and to me it's a really special one. I, I, I like that one a lot. Yeah, and um, it has got that, I can see and hear audiences, you've got this whoa, 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 you've got a huge yeah. sing-along chorus and I can see audiences yeah. all over the world really screaming that back at you because everyone will be so pleased to get back to the live music experience that they'll want to sing along they'll yeah. want to dance and i can see going to live as being a, a huge song in your repertoire but that's just yeah <laughs> yeah that's how i that's how i feel as well and and i really wanted to i really wanted to write a song that was defiant you know not to not to get away from the um uh, from the melancholy or the the sadness that people have, have felt and, and that I've personally felt around around this an exhaustion, you know, an exhaustion not being able to perform of, of all of those sorts of things, but ultimately to to get to a place of, of defiance, of, of living, of being and, and that's that's a um it may sound grand but it but it doesn't feel grand to me. It just feels like this is what we do when we perform and we when we're either going going somewhere to listen and to be part of that exchange, or, or to be on stage, and, and to be to be um, leading it in that way, and uh, it's it's a very beautiful thing for for me in my life, and um, and that that song's an internal decision to say, now we're going to get back there, I guess. Yeah, and the other song that you've released, Great Beauty, uh, also has a backstory, but totally different from the Going to Live story. Can you? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, look, Great Beauty as a song probably started um, on a walk I took in Istanbul with Harry back, I don't remember when that was, but we walked to the to the big mosques and, and heard the call to prayer and it felt um, like a really musical moment. There was a kind of call and response happening there and and I remember hearing it and thinking it was was magic. And, um, and then a some years later, you know, these things often just hover around the back of your mind, and then when when you're trying to write a song, you think, oh, there's something in, in that being called to called to some place, in a musical way. So um, that song started there, and, and I guess the chorus um, is is of a fairly exuberant 
nature, you know, it's that, that sort of overflowing a lot of forms, so hopefully a fairly catchy vocal line that, that calls people into into that live experience again. And I think both of these songs for different reasons are um are very much owed to the, the Cat Empire experience of getting that overflowingness, you yeah. know, to the to the night. Yeah. Getting that, that, that feeling where you can sort of let go. I'm not sure if the Cat Empire makes that much sense outside of those moments, you know. <laughs> but 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 you try and write songs for this band that um will come to life as soon as they're as soon as they're on stage or as soon as they're amongst an audience which has come with a sense of purpose and occasion. Yep. And uh, presumably that musical theme, as always, runs through the rest of the album. And when is that album due? Do you have a, a date or not just yet? No, we don't have a date. There is um, There are songs come, coming out in the next few months. Okay. So there's, a, there's a collection of songs coming out, so, so there'll, there'll be new music. Cool. You and, know it. and presumably, uh, you'll you'll be adding a few of these songs to the set list at Blues Fest. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's uh, one of the exciting things is we've been able to write some new songs, and so I think um, I think we'll play both those new ones. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I I remember last time we spoke, and I asked you, you know, what's on the set list for Blues Fest, and you went, I haven't even thought. We don't think about that until we sort of feel the moment. Um, but <laughs> yeah, until till ten, ten minutes before the show. Um, <laughs> but presumably, no, it, it, it used, a couple it used of to be these. a lot more like that. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. Of... No, they will be. Yeah. Look, I think Blues Fest when we get back there, when that festival happens, it's going to be such a moment, uh, such a moment for us. Um, that we will play songs that are, that are going to be as uplifting for us and hopefully the audience as possible. So I, I guess these two will make it on, and um, yeah, and some of the some of the back catalogue that 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 feels feels most appropriate to the night. We'll yeah, figure it out. and I like the word you used, uplifting, and I think that's what it's going to be. It's not just going to be oh, great music and great people and great experience, but the whole sort of coming together once more in a a beautiful, marvellous musical experience. It is. It's going to be joy and uplifting, you know. Anyway. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you always spring a little surprise on us at uh, Blues Fest, you know, with the Empire Dancers and the Empire Horns and the, uh, the strings, the uh, the empirical strings. Empirica strings. <laughs> Jeez, I'm trying <laughs> to remember all the names that you give. stupid as names for these things, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, look, yeah, look, I, I hope there's going to be some some great surprises. And also, I mean, the, the other fantastic thing is there's so many artists that we know there, you know, like because it's got such an Australian an Australian edge, it's just, um, it's going to be such a fantastic time to catch up with people as well. Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, so, yeah. Yes. Uh, you also, last time you uh, for our Easter program, you were going to open the first night and you said you were coming for the whole time and going to relax after your show. It will be yeah, a doddle. Yeah, well, but this time you're playing Dead Set Middle on the Sunday night, you know, alongside people like Hey Otis Coyote and um, John Butler. Yeah, um, great. So, so you, you won't be able to relax too much before. <laughs> no, I know. It's always great when you can play early at those festivals because then you can just, just relax. Whereas you, if you're if you're waiting to do your performance, you can never quite, you know, never quite let yourself uh, yeah. unwind as much as you, you would once you've, once you've performed. Yeah, but Absol anyway, it's, it's all good. Anyway, we are looking forward so much to seeing the Cat Empire rock the stage at Blues Fest on the long weekend in October on the Sunday night. Uh, and you'll, you'll catch Felix and probably the whole band in and around the festival for, for the whole weekend. Uh, Felix, travel safe until then, and uh, let's keep rocking until October. Ah, uh, thanks, Frosty. It's great to hear you again, mate.